Shalom, sistren. Shalom, sistren. And welcome to another Linus Liberty lesson. Thank you for joining me today. Um, before we begin, let's just, just give all thanks and praises and honor to the Most High Yah in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, our salvation, our deliverer, our defender, our redeemer. Oh, give him all the glory this day. And let's us just, just invite the Holy Spirit in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach to walk with us through this lesson that we might be edified in our spirit and might be taught by the Most High and according to His truth. We will be continuing with the series, um, The Living Law. Um, we are going to be picking it up today by talking about the numbering of the law. And by the law, in this context, I am referring to the excerpt that we read in the previous video from Exodus chapter 20. If you missed that, um, you may want to take a moment to refresh your memory of the excerpt in scripture of Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 through 18, I believe is what we read in the last video. And um, I mentioned that we would be going deeper into the numbering of the law because when you read that passage, what comes out of that passage of Exodus and also the, the mirror of the passage in Deuteronomy chapter 5 and what comes out of those passages is the Ten Commandments, right? The Decalogue, the Ten Words. And um, there are different religious institutions and that divide the law in different ways. And by that, I mean they take that passage and in order to make them into 10 concise commandments, they have removed some, they have broken some apart, and we'll be analyzing um, the, ten, the ordering and the numbering of the 10 commandments as done and as um, supported by the religious institutions of the modern day Jewish, Jewish, the Catholic Church, and the daughter of Catholic Church, which is Christianity, and then also comparing that to the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church, just in order for us to kind of get a glimpse of what these different institutions are doing, and in order for us to find out what is truth and what is necessarily right. And we're comparing all of this to each other, but at the end of the day, we're ultimately trying to hold this up to the mirror of scripture and seeing if it holds to be true. Religious institutions tend to be, tend to take the law of the Most High and intermix it with the traditions of man and the traditions of, and beliefs that they would like to um, promote on their congregation so it's important for us to just analyze these things rather than follow any of it blindly and also it's important for us to seek the truth according to the scripture the most high so so let's go ahead and take a look here so we'll be starting with Judaism, looking at these Ten Commandments. So these should sound pretty familiar, right? One, I am the Lord thy God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That is what they count as the first commandment. Number two, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Number five, honor thy father and mother. Number six, thou shalt not murder. Number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Number eight, thou shalt not steal. Number nine, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And ten, thou shalt not covet anything that belongs to thy neighbor. And then this, oh, and let me say here, this is coming from the Jewish Virtual Library. I will put these links in the description. And then this, um... Scripture is coming from chadbag.org uh, and it 
is pretty much giving you the same uh, the same numbering as you would see in this one, but I just thought this one was a little bit more concise and easy to see. Um, but it starts off with the same first commandment, um, the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, just looking at these Ten Commandments, all of them have an instruction, right? You shall dot, dot, dot. You shall dot, dot, dot. Instructions for how to live, right? But the first commandment, according to the modern Jewish, say that the first commandment is, I am the Lord your God who brought you up of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That is a statement, but it's not necessarily an instruction or a command. It's just a fact. So, just interesting. Now, we'll be comparing this, so keep that in mind as we now look at the Catholics' ordering or numbering of the Ten Commandments, or the Law. So this is coming out of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, or a version of the Catechism. Hold on, I can actually tell you what this is. Okay, it is the second edition, revised in accordance with the official Latin text promulgated by Pope John Paul II. So just so you know what, I don't know if there's different like how many versions of the catechism there are but this is the version we are reading from just for the sake of this comparison so the interesting thing about this excerpt from this catechism is that they hold up the scriptures of the ten commandments in these two columns so in this first column they're showing you the scriptures um coming out of exodus chapter 20 and then the mirror of those verses in uh, deuteronomy chapter 5 and then they're giving you the commandments that come out of that scripture according to the Catholic Church. So this is where it gets interesting. So the first commandment that they get um, is very similar to the one that we saw. Sorry that this is blurry. I'm not sure why it is so blurry, but I will put the uh, the link for this in the description box so you can look at it in a clear version but it says i am the lord your god you shall have no strange gods before me you shall not have strange gods before me and this is the first commandment it's similar to the commandment the first commandment according to the jewish institution um however it's a bit different it does have a command in it right it's not just the lord brought you out of Egypt but you shall not have strange gods before me because I am the Lord who brought you out of Egypt but notice how in this first commandment according to the Catholics they drop off the part about him being the Yah who brings you out of Egypt the one who brings you out of bondage they drop that and just say I am the Lord you shall have no God strange gods before me then they jump to number two and they say you shall not take the name of the lord your god in vain but let's pause here for a moment because as you can see there's all this scripture right all of this other scripture that they are not really touching on or maybe they're trying to say all of this is going to this first commandment but I mean, what's this space down here? If it's all going to this first commandment, I don't really understand what the space is. But yeah, maybe that's what it is. Because it says, you shall have no other gods before me, right? So that's where they're getting, you shall not have strange gods before me. But it's not just, you shall have no other gods before me, according to scripture. It's also that you shall not make for yourself any graven images, any idols, any images that you worship in substitute of Yah. And when we look at the Jewish Ten Commandments, they have this incorporated into the commandments. You shall have no other gods before me, 
but also you shall not make for yourself a graven image right no idols same here actually this one does take off the idols according to jewish virtual library they do not have the idols on this one but it does say that shall have no other strange guys before me continuing on um we see that the number two you shall not take the name of your lord your god in vain however number two here is you shall have no straight no other gods before me so as you can see here the numbering is already different that's the point i'm trying to get across at the moment remember the sabbath day uh, remember to keep holy the lord's day is the third commandment um the third commandment according to the jewish is do not take the name of the lord your god in vain the fourth commandment for them is remember the sabbath day to keep it holy um well this is the third for, according to the catholic church and then moving on we see four honor your father and mother um you should not kill you should not commit adultery you shall not steal you should not bear false witness against your neighbor you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's goods. So this is the next thing we need to take note of here. Is that this is all, right, part of one commandment, right? You shall not covet your neighbor's house, right? This is all one sentence even from the scripture out of Exodus chapter 20, right? You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or his maidservant or his ox or his ass or anything that is your neighbor's. So this whole command is trying to get the point across that you shall not covet what others have. You shall not long after and desire the things of someone else, right? And looking at this in terms of greed and materialism and desire that cannot be satisfied until you receive it an insatiable appetite if you will this is something we all have to work on right which is why it's an instruction what we are trying to take note of here that's important is that this is all one sentence right but notice how according to the numbering of the commandments by the catholic church it is broken up actually into two separate commandments Number nine is you shall not covet your neighbor's wife. And number 10 is you shall not covet your neighbor's goods. Why is this broken up into two different commandments? Well, ask the Catholic Church. But if we're looking at this, you know, just based on this catechism in front of our eyes, maybe it's because it seems like they're missing something right here, which is... You shall not make for yourself any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or in the earth beneath, right? No idols, no graven images. However, the Catholic Church likes their images of their saints, of the different figures in the Bible. They like those images. They like praying to certain images. And so it seems as if they have purposely left off that commandment according to their doctrine. And, and because of that, have had to break apart the last commandment in that excerpt from Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5 in order to, con to continue this as the Ten Commandments and to keep this as a list of ten instructions. Now... This is the Ten Commandments from the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church. I honestly could not find a source, um, a better source than this. Um, this is a like a lesson, like plan from a specific church um, compiled by this person, Kesis Solomon Mulageta, but. I like tried to find more official sources for the Ten Commandments coming from the Jewish Church as well as um, the Catholic Church. I did want to find, you know, those commandments right out of the Catechism since that's their official doctrine. But for the Ethiopian uh, Orthodox Tewahedo Church, I really couldn't find an official document, and the ones that I could find weren't in English. So I can't say that this is the doctrine or the list um, according 
to the official doctrine, but this is the best I could find. Um, and if they're teaching this to their children, I assume that this is what they're teaching to the congregation as a standard. So just keep that in mind um, as we take a look at this list. So these are the commandments according to the Ethiopian Tewahedo Church. It starts off actually with a command, unlike the Jewish commandments, which start off with a statement, just, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. That's more of an introduction to the law or the Ten Commandments than a commandment. They start off with the commandment, you shall have no other gods before me. Now, they are also kind of missing the, you shall have no graven images, and they also may argue that that commandment is um, intertwined with this one, um, but it's not explicitly stated, you shall have no graven images, um, but perhaps this is just the list um, that was compiled by this particular person, I'm not sure. Number two, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Number three, remember the Sabbath day. Number four, honor your father and mother. Number five, you shall not murder. Number six, you shall not commit adultery. Um, number seven, you shall not steal. Number eight, you shall not bear false witness. Number nine, you shall not covet your neighbor's possessions. Number ten, love your neighbor as yourself. So, this is where the Ethiopian commandments differ, right, from the Jewish and from the Catholic. So, from the Jewish, they differed, right, because already from the first commandment, it's different. Um, and then, excuse me, going back, um, the ninth one for, the ninth commandment for the Jewish is you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor and the tenth is you shall not covet anything of your neighbors but according to the ethiopians eight is not is not to bear false witness nine is to not covet um it says cover but i think it meant covet your neighbor's possessions and number 10 is love your neighbor as yourself so this is a commandment that isn't present in either the jewish or the catholic um 10 commandments not only that but the Ethiopian commandments mostly follow the same numbering as the Catholic Church until you get to number nine as well. And so they kind of inserted this 10th commandment to love your neighbor as yourself which is the commandment that, you know, Hamashiach gave us more than anything when they questioned him asking, what is the greatest commandment according to the law? But it's not necessarily, you know, coming out of the Exodus, these verses of Exodus or Deuteronomy chapter 5, 6 through 21. But you could argue it's still a commandment. So we're just analyzing this, doing a comparison contrast. And then lastly... I thought this was interesting just to find another church institution and analyze how they number the Ten Commandments. So this last institution that we'll be looking at is actually um, the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints, which is the Mormon Church. But I just thought it was interesting because I wanted to know how they ordered their Ten Commandments. And it was interesting because, so this is their, their site, churchofjesuschrist.org, right? And this is their article on the Ten Commandments. And from what I can see, they are pretty much basing all of their commandments off of Scripture. So they start off with the first one, You shall have no other gods before me. And this is the same way that the Ethiopian commandment starts out. And same with the Catholic, You shall have no strange gods before me right number two thou shall not make unto thee any graven image they actually include this commandment similar to the jewish commandments which say which just continue on their second by saying you shall have no other gods before me and you should not make for yourself any graven image right um this is but this one remember did not have anything about idols or graven images so maybe that's assumed to be um, intermingle with this commandment, but it's not explicitly stated. Same with the Catholic commandment, it's not explicitly stated. 
and neither is graven images explicitly stated um, in the Ethiopian commandments. But in the Church of the Latter-day Saints, and in this particular version of the Jewish Ten Commandments, it is explicitly stated, just as it is in the Exodus chapter 20 excerpt. Number three, shall not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And thou shalt not covet. So this is very similar to the commandments that we see of the, um, the similar numbering to the Jewish Ten Commandments. So... And I'm not sure, I did not look into what their explanations of some of these are, because as you can see it says, for an explanation of this commandment, see a different article and all these things. I didn't go into that, so I can't vouch for what they interpret these commandments as, but if this is their list of what the commandments are, just analyzing and comparing them, they do match up pretty well to the ones um, that are supported by the Jewish church. So just interesting to take note of right so now we must ask ourselves after analyzing this well why does it really matter how people number the law why does it really matter that there's different discrepancies for different religious institutions well to answer that question i would simply say that it's important and it matters because we need to analyze these religious institutions and the theology that they are presenting to us based on scriptures Because many times this theology comes in the form of dogma. And they would rather have us follow it blindly than analyze it and discover the truth of the Most High. It is up to us, and we are instructed by the Most High, to seek the truth and to discover it. And we can't do that without the Holy Spirit to guide us. Right? So that's another reason why this matters, not just to analyze the theology being presented by religious institutions you know trying to discover is this man's doctrine or is this god's but also to seek and find the truth and so that leads us to the question well which is the correct numbering which which numbering is the truth and then also was there a more abbreviated version prior to this numbering that has come about based on these later institutions because none of these institutions were around during the time that the law of Moses was given so was there a more abbreviated version that was present on the stones that were engraved by the hand of the most high those original that original set of the law Was that exactly what is stated in Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy uh, chapter 5? Or was it more abbreviated? So the numbering of the law matters because it leads you to these further questions. Trying to analyze the law in its truth, in its entirety, and its origination and development throughout time. Because the numbering of the law that we have today is a modern... I'm not sure if the Israelites had the same numbering that we see today. But I digress. Because I do not have the answer (laughs) to these questions.